These books are so beautiful. I'm back today with a really exciting book haul. I have been sent five absolutely gorgeous books from Fairlight Books. Look at these. Just look at that. How beautiful are they? So this is the Fairlight Moderns collection, which is a collection of short fiction set in various locations around the world. And um, really bizarrely, as I was contacted about these books, I'd actually been researching on Pinterest a couple of the locations in um, two of the books themselves. I'm really interested in places all around the world and I often get myself a little bit obsessed with a different country or a different region of somewhere and I'll research it on Pinterest, Instagram. It's a bizarre habit I know but um, when I received this email it sort of seemed like fate and um, I obviously said yes I would like to review these books and um, so I'm here to show them to you, to sort of haul them because I've just received them and um, tell you a little bit about what they're, what they're about. So the first book that I've got is this one. This is Bottle of Goods by Sophie Van Leeuwen and this book is set in Romania which is one of the places that I was actually researching at the time that I received this email due to the fact that I've just been reading an audiobook which was set in Romania and I realised I didn't actually know a lot about the country so I was going through Instagram and Pinterest and um, people's TripAdvisor stories and things um, just so I could get sort of a picture of Romania in my head which I do if I hear about a country that I don't know a lot about. And so this book is set in Romania. Now Sophie Van Leeuwen, the author of this book, is actually from Southeast Romania and she's published and won awards for her flash fiction and short stories that have been published across the UK and um, so this is her first sort of longer fiction. I say longer, these, these books are all quite short, this one's 185 pages. So this story is about Alina and Alina's brother-in-law has defected to the West and that has left her and her husband to come under the scrutiny of the secret services which grinds both of their careers to a halt. And so Alina is obviously in turmoil about this and asks her aunt for help. And her aunt is the wife of a communist leader but she is also a practitioner of the old ways. And this book combines everyday troubles with magical realism. And this intrigues me. Again, as I've said, I've been reading up on Romania and um, I'm really interested very, very interested, to be honest, in reading more about Romania. And so this book was the first book that I'd read the synopsis of before I agreed to review these on my channel. Um, and yeah, this one was the one that really drew me in right from the start. And um, just look at that cover. I've got a black cat myself and um, I just love cats. And um, I can't wait to get into this one. And I'm hoping that, as well as being an interesting read, I'm hoping that I'm going to sort of find out a little bit more about Romania as I... As I go through it. So that one is Bottled Goods by Sophia Van Leeuwen. Very pretty. The next one that I've got is this one. This one's called Travelling in the Dark and this is by Emma Timpany. Um, again, another beautiful gorgeous cover and this is set in New Zealand. New Zealand is the other place that I was busy sort of stalking online. After I'd been speaking to someone in New Zealand who had sent me some pictures of their local landscape and um, I thought it was really beautiful. The premise of this book sounds so intriguing to me. It's about Sarah who's travelling back to her hometown in South New Zealand with her with her young son and there's been an earthquake which has closed off the road to where she's going. And because of this earthquake and the road closure she has to now take a longer detour through some towns and cities and places from her childhood that she vowed never to come back to. And it forces her to confront issues from her childhood and things that she had hoped never to revisit. She actually goes on this trip down memory lane, there are memories from her childhood that resurface and she realises that she must confront them now for the sake of her son or be lost forever. And this speaks to me, there are certain areas from my childhood homes where I wouldn't want to go back and visit um, and certain areas that I have closed off to myself and hope never to return to. And so this, this speaks to me on a personal level and I'm really interested to find out about Sarah's journey and um, find out what she does and what, what happens and the emotional turmoil that I'm guessing is going to come with this. Emma Timpany herself is from New Zealand, she was born and raised there and now she lives in Cornwall in the UK and um, so I think she'll have a very sort of personal touch on what New Zealand is like and um, really get you into the mindset of being in New Zealand. Um, which is a place I've always wanted to visit and I find it quite an intriguing country and, I, and during my research online I've seen some really beautiful landscapes and things of New Zealand and so I want to get into the mindset and um, read a story set there because I don't think I ever have. And for those two reasons, Travelling in the Dark sounds like a book that I'm really going to enjoy sinking my teeth into.
Next up we've got this one, There Are Things I Know by Karen Golightly. This one sounds like it's going down a complete different path and this is about a young boy called Pepper who after a field trip is picked up by a stranger who informs him that his mum is dead and he's taken away. This man calls himself Uncle Dan and he explains that the two are going to live together from now on but Pepper isn't convinced and he thinks that this is all a big lie and that his mum is still alive. And it says that Pepper always found it difficult to figure out when people were lying to him um, but he is absolutely 100% certain that his mum is still alive and he wants to find her. So this is set in rural Arkansas in America and it is a place I've never really heard much about. Um, again, I don't think I've read a book set there and when I do start reading this book I'm obviously going to start on my um, my googling, my instagramming and pinteresting of Arkansas so that I can see what it looks like and get a picture in my head so that I can really picture the scenery and picture the surrounding area when I'm reading it. The author Karen Golightly is an associate professor of English and she has won awards for her stories and her poetry and her photography as well and she sounds a very interesting person and so when I read this book as well as um as well as my sort of image stalkery of the Arkansas area, I'm going to also look up Karen Golightly as well and see if um, I can find any of the photography or anything that she's took online because I do love a bit of photography to be honest. The fourth book in this collection is Inside the Bone Box by Anthony Ferner. Inside the Bone Box is about Nicholas Anderton who is a respected neurosurgeon and at the top of his field. Um, but he is haunted by a toxic marriage and um, mis past mistakes that he'd rather forget. And so he's been turning to eat in to comfort himself and get him through the hard times. This has opened him up to ridicule. People are sniggering behind closed doors about him and talking about how can a neurosurgeon be so overweight. And um, it just sounds like he's having a miserable time in general. So eventually his old adversary Nash steps in to start taking advantage of him. And this is when Anderton knows that things are starting to come to a head. The author Anthony Ferner is, has been raised in London and Berkshire. I lived myself in Berkshire for a year, I think. A year, might have been a year and a half. Um, and I lived and worked down there for a while and it's a beautiful part of the country. And so it doesn't actually say on the back of this book where, the, where this book is set. So I'll find that out when I read it. But, but if it's set around the Berkshire area, I'll have an idea of, of um, sort of the general surrounding area and I can draw upon my own experiences of, of living there. And I'm really interested to find out about this, this man's journey. The final book in the collection is this beautiful one. I really like the, the yellow, mustardy yellow colour. It's one of my favourite colours alongside pink. I love pinks, baby blues and mustard yellow. Um, just a random side note for you there. I don't know why I felt they able to share that. But this is The Driver Has Two Sides by Sarah Merchant. Sarah is a published author and she lives in the high desert of Southern California. It says she lives with her husband, two dogs, a goat and five chickens. Um, I feel you Sarah, I live with um, some dogs, some cats and I've also got five chickens as well. High fives on the chickens. And this is the story of Delilah who moves into a cottage on the coast and the neighbours start to gossip about it immediately. They watch and are disgruntled when she starts planting a garden out front of her house and um, they aren't keen on what she plants and thinks the whole situation is very unusual. And so I like the sound of Delilah, I like people who sort of go against the grain a bit so I want to see what happens there. And Delilah knows that all of the neighbours are watching her, but there is a man that lives across the way who um, never seems to go out. And she likes the look of him, but she wonders if her life's already too complicated to engage. I myself moved into a cottage in a, in a very, very small community. And um, I also was very heavily watched for the first couple of years. <laughs> and so this again, this, this speaks to me on a, on a personal level. And I really want to find out what happens with Delilah and um, I want to know if she does talk to the man across the way because um, that could be interesting. So all of these are really short books and I think they're going to make some really interesting summer reads. Um, I've been reading a couple of really quite heavy books um, at the moment. I'm halfway through, well I say halfway, I'm, um, I've got 100 pages left of I'll Be Gone in the Dark which is about a serial killer. Um, I've just read a book, I've just listened to an audiobook which was um, really very heavy um, with some heavy themes in it which um, I find quite disturbing. So I'm looking for some shorter books to be able to break up the um, dense, dense um, things I've been reading. And these beautiful little works of fiction couldn't have come at a better time. And um, I am also in the process of updating my reading room and getting some new bookshelves and I can't wait to get these on my shelves because they are absolutely stunning. Um, 
it's just that the aesthetic is something that really appeals to me. And as usual, I'd be really interested to know if you've read any of them, if you're going to read any of them, or if any of them intrigue you the way they've intrigued me. And um, I'd like to know what you think of the covers of them as well. Like I say, they are absolutely stunning. Um, I love the simplicity and um, the sort of the classic feel to them, and I really like the colouring. Um, I mean, if I could show you my house, which I'm not going to do because that would take too long, but um, if I could show you my house, my whole house is sort of decorated in um, sort of this sort of style um, with, um, with sort of pastels and vintagey colours and um, yeah, so everything about these draws me in as I've said a million times. So I'm going to let you all go now and let me know if you are going to read any of them yourself and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye for now.